Hi, so in this module we will be introducing you to Python. Python is a very pro powerful programming language yet very simple to understand, very easy to use and is an open source uh, package. It is a scripting language which uh, has a whole lot of APIs online and it is very easy for you to install these APIs and work with Python. This is one major reason why I thought we will use Python for our network analysis related work for social network analysis related work. So, in this session I will be showing you some quick ways of um, learning Python, quick things that you must know about Python and you can get started. It is not required that you undergo a complete course in Python and then start using Python. Three, four things and you and you are on, you, you can start using Python. So, my uh, personal recommendation, my personal favorite is this codeacademy.com where you can go create a username and then start learning Python. It has very nice exercises uh, unless you solve an exercise you cannot go further and these exercises are in increasing difficulty. I strongly suggest that you finish a few lessons there and get yourself familiarized with Python and or you can just look at what we do on the screencast which I am going to show you right now and learn Python parallel. Now a word on installing Python. If you are using Ubuntu, the process is pretty straightforward. On Mac, again it is very easy to install. But if you are using Windows, I would suggest that you download what is called Anaconda, which is a, a big package which includes all the scientific programming requirements using Python. And once installed, I think you are all done. But on Ubuntu and Mac, it is a pretty straightforward process. For our demonstrations, we are using a Mac machine and this is the terminal that I have opened on a Mac machine. So, what I do is I type ipython. So, this ipython is interactive python which opens a shell like this where I can easily type the code. A note on ipython, it is very easily installable on Ubuntu and Mac, but on Windows as I told you, you need anaconda in which ipython is a built in uh, package. Okay, so, in IPython, let me try showing you a few things. A equals to, this is basically Python with a with a interactive shell and then let us say B equals 5. So, unlike C, you do not have um, uh, any declarations that are required for variables. You just say A equals to B equals 5 and it assigns A to 2 and B to 5. And if I say C equals, let us say Sudarshan, now, C will be a string type variable automatically and look at the ease with which I can swap two variables A comma B is equal to B comma A and then if I print A and print B, the values are swapped. Let me swap them once again back to normal. If I print A, it will be 2, if I print B, it will be 5. We will now see how one can use for loop, while loop and if loop in Python. It is pretty straightforward, I will still give you an illustration. I would suggest that you try getting your hands on with these things, so that you get familiarized with it. So, a for loop works like this. If I say for i in range 10, I say print i, it simply prints i from 0 to 9. This is how a for loop works. A while loop also works in a similar way, if I say k equals let us say 10 and I say while k is less than or equal to 20, do print k and then increment k, just starts k with 10 and goes on till 20. So, the value of k now is 21. What I will do is I will illustrate if loop now using this k value, if k is greater than 20, which by the way is the case, k's value seems to be 21. I will say print the value of k is greater than 20. So, this is true. So, it displays the value of k is greater than 20. So, if I say if k is, is greater than 25, then print uh, something, something. I am illustrating the usage of uh, else here. I say else print 
the statement is incorrect, is false, let us say, is false. Let us say the statement is false, right? This is how uh, if else loop works. So, we now just now saw how for loop works, while loop works, and if loop works. Suggest that you people play around with it so that you get familiarized with it. A big advantage of using a scripting language like Python is it comes with a whole lot of uh, library functions. I am now going to show you one such library function which we will be using a whole lot throughout our course. Let me use a library function called random. This is how you input, if you, you load the library function to your memory, you say import space random and then in this function you can call, in, the, in this library you can call a particular function let us say rand range 1 comma 10. What does this do? This simply gives you a random number from 1 to 10. Let me execute this command once again. Uh, you press the up arrow in um, um, IPython shell and the entire thing comes. Press enter, you will, sh you will get another random number from the range 1 to 10. Again, again you see. I am getting random numbers from 1 to 10. Let me now change this instead of 10, let me make it 4. This will give you random numbers from 1 to 4. 1, 2, 3 and so on. Um, yeah, you will get 4 too as you keep trying or maybe it is only till, yeah, it is only till. Uh, Okay, so you will not get 5, you will only get the number just before it. So, random dot rand, rand range, I do not know what it does. So, what I do is random dot rand range question mark. This will tell me everything of what it does. As you can see, choose a random item from the range start till stop. The stop is mostly 1 before the number specified here. Okay, so if I say random rand range 1 comma 100, it will give me a random number from 1 to 100. In case I say random dot random once again, this is another uh, library function which gives me a random number between 1, 0 to 1. See, it gave me a random number between 0 to 1. Let me type that once again. Another random number between 0 to 1, another random number between 0 to 1, so on and so forth. So basically when I am doing this, I am pressing my up arrow and pressing enter. Up arrow just repeats the previous command. All right. So if you want to see what all you can do with the random library function, just put a dot after random and press tab, you will get all possibilities. And you can use the arrow mark to go around and then see what does what. And there is a whole lot of uh, functions written here. Okay. Let us look at yet another function random rand int. So, what does it do? Put a question mark, you will get to know that it returns a random integer in the range a comma b including both endpoints. So, let us try that. Random rand int 1 comma 5 gives you 2, so on and so forth. Okay. Somehow, strangely 5 is not coming. Yeah, 5 came right now. Right? So, it is between 1 to 5. But rand range is different as you saw before. We will now look at what are lists in Python. Lists in Python as I said are very similar to arrays and we will see how to use them. So initially what I will do right now is I will declare a list called L. This is how you declare it. L equals open bracket, close bracket. And then you say L append, you put some number to print L. L will have that number 2 right now. Let me say L append 10. Now to the existing list L, the number 10 gets appended. If you say print L, you will get 2 comma 10. So on, if I keep adding and then if I print, you will see 2, 10, 100 and let us say L append 7, print L, 7 gets appended, so on and so forth. The best part is you can append whatever you want including character string, string, uh, character string and whatever you want, any data type. Okay, now look at this. Let me add more numbers to this, uh, 77, 
L append uh, 14. So, and then print L, you have these numbers. Sorting this is very easy. You simply say L dot sort and it will sort L as you see L is now sorted. Okay. If you want to reverse L, you simply say L dot reverse. See what happens to this. See it got reversed, descending order. Okay. What all can you do with this uh, sort and reverse is what I told you. What all can you do? Simply put a L dot and then press tab, tab key and you will see all possibilities. Up and count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove. So, if you want to know what remove does, type remove and put a question mark and it will tell you. Remove first occurrence of the value which means if I say L remove 77, it will remove 77 from the list as you can see 77 is here in the list. Let us see if it removes or not. I have removed 77, print L, yes, 77 is removed now. Okay. So, this is about list. Uh, let me type something non trivial and show you what all you can do with the list. Uh, we use random function, right? So, let us uh, import random library function and then I say um, uh, for i in range 100, uh, L append uh, random random. So, which means it appends 100 random numbers to L, print L and you see a lot of random numbers that apart from the initial 100, 14, 10, 7, 2 that we uh, appended, uh, we now have 100 random numbers appended. Okay. So, let us do a small exercise. Let me clear the screen. This is the command used for clearing the screen. Uh, what does this do? I uh, will I'll reinitialize L so that whatever was present in L is lost. Now, I will do for I in range 40 L append random rand int 1 comma 365. So, what am I doing here? I am picking a date of birth of a person. Let us say if he was born on February 1st, then you assign the number 32 to him. If he was born on January 5th, you assign the uh, number 5 to him. So, based on which day he was born, you assign a number from 1 to 365 to that person. Okay. Pick 40 people and assign this uh, date of birth randomly to each person. Okay. The point I am trying to make is I, am, I have now created a list L which comprises of 40 different birthdays. DDMM, day month only, not the year, 40 different birthdays of people. Let me see how it looks like. Print L has 40 different numbers from 1 to 365. Let me sort this. Let me print this. So, you see there are all these numbers and uh, there are no repetitions. I do not see any repetition here, correct? There are no repetitions. Perfect. Now, what if I were to do the same thing? Let us say I reinitialize for i in range 60. I say L append random rand int 1 comma 365. Print L. So, I will again uh, sort this so that I can check for repetitions if any. I will see if there is anything repeated, 3, 12, 15, 33, uh, let us see if there is any repetition, I do not see a repetition, yeah, I see a repetition, look at this, 143 is picked twice, okay, 153 and so on, is there any other repetition, I do not see any other repetition, 274 is another repetition, correct, and then uh, any other repetition that you can spot, let me check. 337 is another repetition, there are 3 repetitions. So, fine, there were 3 repetitions, but is it coincidental? So, what do I do? Let me repeat this experiment. L equals initialize once again. Again, say for i in range 60, L append random rand int 1, 365, and then you print L, it is obviously not sorted. So, you sort it and then print L, you will see 
for 40 um, picking there was no repetition, for 60 there was. I am repeating the experiment to see if it is true that you will always get repetitions. Um, ah, there is a repetition once again, 173, 173, 178, 178, second repetition, right? And then 206, 206, another repetition. Um, any other repetition? Let us see. 287, 287, third repetition. 301, 301, 4 repetitions in this case, 301 and 301, excellent, 307, 307, 5 repetitions, 6 repetitions, 311 uh, and so on, correct? Okay. So, uh, what did we just observe? We observed that by just taking um, uh, uh, a list L with how many entries, uh, let us say, we. I just printed L before, let me again print it. So, there were uh, len of L tells you the length of L, number of elements in L. So, there are 60 elements because of a for loop we took 60 elements and if you pick randomly uh, some 60 people, you will have a uh, couple of them sharing their birthdays. This is always true, almost always true with a high probability when you pick 60 people from uh, uh, randomly. Uh, and ask for their birthdays, you will have two people with the same birthday. What does it mean? You go to a classroom randomly uh, with some 60 students and ask them for their birthdays, you will see two people with the same birthday in that classroom. Walk into any classroom, this is almost always true. This is called the birthday paradox. This is not a command by the way in Python, <laughs> I am just writing it to uh, illustrate it. So, a birthday paradox, you can just google for it uh, for more information. A very interesting uh, fact that if you pick some 40 to 60 people, 40 it is rare, 60 definitely uh, if you pick, definitely you will observe uh, two people with the same birthday. We just wrote a code and observed it um, right now live. Okay, that is with lists. As you would have seen the course home page, the prerequisites for this course is simply a first course in programming. I suppose you all have studied programming in one form or the other. One of the most powerful um, uh, facility that you get in programming is your ability to write functions and Python has a very easy way in which one can write functions. We are going to illustrate that right now. Now demonstrate how we write functions in Python. It is a pretty straightforward process. Let me try writing a function on the shell itself first and then I will show you how to um, write functions in a file. So, it is it is done the following way. You say def define and then you will say sum up and then a colon open bracket close bracket and a colon and then you say let us say a equals uh, random random which means uh, assign a random number from 0 to 1 to a and then b equals same random random assign a random number to b and then i return a plus b enter enter so what does it do when i invoke sum up it just shows me the answer please note the answer is more than one here that's because a and b are two random numbers between 0 to 1 there some can go beyond one let me invoke sum up once again what will happen picks two random numbers between 0 to 1, add them and then display it, so on, so on, perfect. So, what you can do is whatever command, whatever function definition you wrote right now, you can actually open a file and then type it as well. Let me do that. I am opening my favorite uh, uh, notepad, um, I mean favorite editor which is a VI editor. So, how do I invoke it? I use exclamation vi space, so let us say file name, I say sudarshan.py. This opens a new file, okay. You can use your own um, uh, favorite uh, text editor. I use my, I use VA editor. Note that exclamation stands for in the here, when you say exclamation, it stands for outside command and then the editor name and I typed my uh, file name. You can even go outside this terminal and then open the uh, text editor and then type it there also, no problem. So, let me define something here, um, define 
sum 3 rand okay which is summing three random numbers huh? how do i do it i i should first import random without that i cannot use the random function here in a file a equals random random b equals random random c equals random random and then i return a plus b plus c and then i come out it's now saved i'll display the contents of sudarshan.py using the cat command of linux uh, it will just display the contents of the file you see that this much is there please note i have put import random here otherwise this this will not work okay this was not the case with the define thing that i wrote here i straight away used it that is because i had imported random already okay perfect now what do i do how do i invoke this sum3 rand that is written inside a file by name sudarshan.py that is pretty simple so what i do is i say i use the same import command when i say import sudarshan the sudarshan library whatever is contained in sudarshan gets loaded okay basically uh, when i say import sudarshan import random happens and a function uh, some three rand gets defined with the following uh, statements and now i can invoke it see how i can invoke it i simply say sudarshan dot sum three rand and that's it there you are a random number between 0 to 1 added thrice okay let me type it once again sudarshan dot sum 3 rand again gives you the same dot sum 3 rand gives you some random number between 0 to 3 it is not really random because it is picking a random number from 0 to 1 adding it thrice okay uh, this is actually not uniformly at random uh, if you know probability you will know that but that is not our concern here we are just observing that it is generating uh, a random number thrice and adding it and then displaying it the point is you see what is happening here sudarshan is the name of the file and then in that i am invoking some three rand and i am displaying it now let me further edit sudarshan.py how do i do that vi sudarshan.py and let me define another function here define some k rand what does that mean add k random numbers now how do i do that i take k as a parameter here and then i say for i in range k you have had some programming experience that is the prerequisite for this course you know what i am doing i will say answer equals 0 and then i will add to answer answer plus random random and that is it now let me go inside i must return this i am sorry i came out without returning it so i'll say return answer so what have i done here k is the parameter here as you can see and then i have initialized the answer to 0 and then i'm running a, a for loop k number of times that's what this means for i in range k means uh, assign assign value 0 1 2 3 up to k minus 1 to i uh, uh, whatever is assigned to i, I it doesn't matter to me here all i want is i want to execute this loop k times this particular thing k times so answer equals answer plus random dot random simply picks a random number from 0 to 1 and adds it to the existing answer and assigns the new value to answer and finally i come out of the for loop and then return answer okay so what does this do let me see let me save this and then come out now please note import sudarshan will actually not work what you should do is whenever you have opened a file editor and you have added something new and then saved and come out you should not use import you should use reload sudarshan so sudarshan is reloaded into the memory with the new updates a new function that i wrote just now and then you can open the new file what is that sum k r a n d and then i say 10 so what should this output 10 random number sum okay if i say 100 instead of 10 see 100 instead of 10 it will add 100 times a random number from 0 to 1 and then output the answer yeah 
perfect. If I just say 2, if I just say 1, it is as good as a random function, correct. So, what did you just now learn? You learned the following, you can create a file and then write down your functions there and then invoke it from outside. How do you invoke? Just say Sudarshan dot followed by the name of the file, sum2, sum3 rand is what we declared uh, without any parameter. It generated a random number by picking random uh, function thrice. And we also saw, saw, we also wrote a function by name sum k rand with an input parameter, let us say 5, which took 5 random numbers added and then displayed. Okay. One important tip, open the editor, an important tip, you can come here and then write your favorite help one liner. You can say this function um, takes no input, but outputs the sum of 3 random numbers picked between 0 and 1 and then close it. Now, you see what happens? Let me show you. I am going out, saved. You just saw what I did. I opened the editor sudarshan.py and I have added this thingy here. What did I do? 3 single quotes followed by some random text okay? and then I closed the 3 single quotes and I came out. There is some change to the file. So, I should say reload Sudarshan. Now, when I, when I want to execute some command in Sudarshan, I type Sudarshan and then put a dot and then tab is a very important key. When you press a tab here, it will show you all the functions that are available in Sudarshan. Random is available because random is imported there, right? Some 3 rand, some k rand is available. If you put some 3 rand, which by the way is a function that I just defined, and then put a question mark, guess what happens? It shows you your help file that you just now wrote. You see this? This function takes no input, but outputs the sum of 3 random numbers picked between 0 and 1. Who wrote this? We wrote this just now, correct? Let me write a similar help file for the other command too. So, what do I do? Uh, vi sudarshan.py and then I am sorry, I I forgot to put an exclamation, vi sudarshan.py without exclamation the outside commands do not work, vi is an outside command. I will come here, what does this do? Let me just state that here, this function takes k as input and adds random numbers between 0, between, between um, 0 random numbers between 0 and 1 k times and then outputs the answer. Close the single quote, save, you see what I did? I just wrote uh, help function, help um, uh, one line for some k rand function and then I go out and then I reload my Sudarshan file. Now, I say Sudarshan sum k rand and then question mark it shows me the help, whatever you have typed comes here. Now, why is this even used? This is used because when you write hundreds of functions, see here we wrote only two functions. What if I write hundred functions here in this file and I would not know what function is doing what. So, it is important for us to write down what a function is doing in the form of help file. Okay, that is with the introduction to functions and um, you now know how to define a function on the IPython terminal. You also know how to define, how to, how to create a file, uh, edit a file and then type the functions there and then come out of it and then invoke it by saying firstly import Sudarshan and then second time when you edit something and then uh, you want to reload it, you must say reload Sudarshan. Note, reload is used when you edit the file and reload means update the contents of Sudarshan, I have just now changed it. Okay? And then what you do is you say Sudarshan dot sum whatever is the name of the file, name of the function and it executes that function however big, however complicated. 
it executes the function and shows you the answer. That is with functions. 